Hi guys, I'm back, and today we are going to do some magic with mica powders, or hopefully we are. <laughs> okay, so what I've got planned here is we're going to do a flip cup, just a general flip cup, but we're going to mix uh, acrylic paint with mica powder and silicone. So we're going to see what the mica powders do with the acrylic paints, and then we're going to put silicone in it. Now, it's not going to be the greatest painting as far as cells are concerned because, um, in my experience, the, the uh, metallic paints don't do as well creating cells as, say, the regular paints do. Um, and because the metallics are paint with, that are made with a, a pouring medium and a mica powder, it's not actual, you know, paint pigment. Um, it reacts a little differently with the silicone, but we're going to try it anyway, just to see what we can get. And we're going to mix the transparent, uh, transparent slash translucent paints with the mica powders, no opaques. Um, I did do sort of a little test the other day. The opaque paint just kind of hides the mica powder. It doesn't really add this beautiful, pretty prettiness to it. So we're going to use, I'm breaking my rule here. We're going to use all transparent slash translucent paints. Other than the metallic white, we're going to use a little bit of that, and it is a semi, uh, let's see, semi-transparent. No, it just says semi for this one because it's a mica powder. Um, and I did add just a teeny tiny bit of white flow acrylic from Archloft, uh, which is, it doesn't say on the bottle. I'm thinking it's more semi rather than complete opaque, but it's pretty opaque. Um, I digress. So we're going to do a pour. We're going to mix, as I said, we're going to mix the transparent paints with the mica powders um, and uh, add a little bit of silicone to them. And yeah. So one quick little art science lesson here. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me, um, one, you've been you know, sending me these awesome emails with some of your problems. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can, you know, narrow down, um, you know, what the issues you're having are and, and you can get some pores that you're happy with. Now the pictures that you guys are sending me, I think they're beautiful paintings. You guys are doing an awesome job. Um, so don't get discouraged. My, my, my main, you know, tip is don't get discouraged. Have a lot of patience, experiment a lot. Don't just follow my recipe. If my recipe is not working for you, go to somebody else's channel and try theirs out. You know, stick with me. We try a lot of fun things, but also look at, at there's a lot of other artists out there that use completely different ingredients um, and they get amazing, gorgeous, beautiful paintings as well. So, um, yeah, so have a lot of patience, experiment a lot, definitely use 100% silicone. And if you get silicone and it uh, is kind of like a thick gel type silicone, it's probably got something else in it, so don't use it. Um, return it and order something different. I use the Lifespan Treadmill Belt Lubricant, which is 100% silicone, and it's it's a very watery. I mean, it's like it looks like water in there. That's the consistency. So if your silicone is thicker than that, don't use it because it's probably not 100% silicone, even if it might say 100% silicone. Um, if you think it might not be, you can always call the company. The company <laughs> companies. Um, will tell you, you know, if they have the knowledge, what's in their product. So, um, yeah. Um, and one question I've been getting, I've, I've gotten several questions lately about opaque, transparent, and translucent, and then the in-betweens. So if you've got a tube of paint and it has an empty box right there in the front of it, right there, this means that this is going to be a transparent paint. Um, and the little stars are usually the light fastness and light fastness means, um, how well is it going to stand up to time and light? Uh, is it going to fade in the sunlight really bad or is it going to stay the same color and look great year after year after year? That's what that is. Um, opaque, obviously opaque is, is thick. You can't see through it. There's no light comes through. There's no images that come through. On the transparent, 
you've got images and light that come through. Translucent is just the light that comes through. The images are, I mean, of course you can see kind of, but it's fuzzy. So translucent, just the light comes through. Transparent, uh, images and light come through. Uh, like this right here. These several colors are transparent. Okay, you can see the image and you can see the, the white paper through it. You know, you can see the light through it. Okay, so these two up here are going to be semi-transparent or semi-translucent. Some are translucent, some are transparent. It doesn't really much matter when you're doing this kind of painting. As, if it says semi, it's half. Um, you can kind of see through it. So, you know, if you're, if you're doing a painting, use like one or two opaques, then maybe one or two semis, and then, you know, two or three transparent or translucents. I always like to err on the side of more transparent, translucent paints than opaque. Um, if I've got maybe two semis and a transparent and then one opaque, that's good. I don't like to do like three, three opaques and then maybe one transparent. The opaques tend to, with my formula anyway, the opaques tend to sort of lay on top of the other colors and they don't let quite so many colors through. So the transparent ones are usually like the rings around your cells and then the opaque is sort of that milky powdery looking chunk of cell in the center and then the surrounding areas around the cells. So if you like a lot of those rings, use more transparent translucent paints. That's in my experience. Um, you guys go out and look at everyone else's channels. There are some great artists out there who use completely different formulas. Um, Anne Marie is definitely, you know, one of the one of the best in my opinion. Um, you've got Christina Welch; hers are completely different. You've got Melly D. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But just go check out, you know, twenty people's different formulas because I guarantee you one of those formulas is going to work for you, but not everybody's will. Um, Okay, so enough with the art science for today, um, but just you guys have patience, experiment a lot, and believe in yourself that you will eventually get the painting that you get completely excited about, jump up and down, run down the street naked, well maybe not naked, but, um, <laughs> but call your mom and tell her, yay, you did it. Okay, so I um, think I've rattled on long enough. So we're going to mix the colors and we're going to see, I've already mixed up the paint because, you know, mixing the paint is kind of boring to watch. Um, just popping some air bubbles over here real quick. Let me make sure we're in focus. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. So for some reason, this yellow has a lot of air bubbles and it, they just keep coming and coming and coming. Um, this is obviously not the Artist Loft paint. This is the De La Rowney Simply Acrylic. Um, I haven't used it before. I found it in just one of those, you know, kind of like a thrift store and it's 50 cent for a tube paint. So what, you know, why not? Uh, so then we've got metallic white. And like I said, I've mixed it with just a pinch of flow acrylic. These paints just have the paint so far, uh, some flow troll and a little bit of chilled distilled water. They will have the mica powders and a drop of silicone. Um, so we're using the metallic white from Artist Loft, the medium yellow from Simply Acrylic, De La Rowney, the violet from Artist Loft, the brilliant magenta, Artist Loft, and the orange, Artist Loft. And I really try hard to, in the beginning of my videos, to tell you guys what colors I'm using because I usually forget by the time I post the video what the colors were and I have to go back and watch the video and it's just kind of a pain. So. Um, if you guys will listen to the beginning of the video, I usually try and show you or tell you what colors I'm using. Um, cause sometimes I get a lot of questions on what colors did you use? And it's like, it's right there in the beginning of the video. So you guys, you know, if you, if you have questions, if you listen to everything, sometimes, you know, your questions will get answered. Um, I know sometimes it's real tempting just to fast forward through a bunch of the boring stuff, but this is when we, you know, when we're doing the boring stuff, mixing paint stuff, this is when we talk. Um, but keep the questions coming guys. Cause I love it. You know, I, I, I hope that I'm at least helping somebody. Okay. So we're going to get rid of all of these. Well, actually, yeah, 
let's get some, uh, completely forgot to get my little sticks to mix with to get my uh, mica powder out. So we're going to get some sticks right quick. Okay, these are popsicle sticks. I did not buy these in the store, obviously. You can see they're all red and orange and colorful. You guys, if you have kids, give them a bunch of popsicles during the summertime and save every popsicle stick that they that they eat off of. Because I'm telling you, um, this does not have any effect on anything I've ever done. I even mix resin with these. And the color, you know, it's stained into the wood. And once the wood dries, it's not going to come out in your paint. So don't be afraid to use. These are actually my husband's popsicle sticks. My kids don't like popsicles all that much. But he loves them. So save all your popsicle sticks. Because it'll save you some money. Okay? All right. We're going to try. We're going to set the white aside. Because we don't need to add anything to that. So the yellow. We're going to put the cactus in there. And, you know... I have no idea how much mica powder we should be adding. Um, I really don't. So we're just going to add kind of a, a scoop in there. Just a little scoop. You guys saw how much that was, hopefully. And um, when you guys are zipping these bags closed, don't squish them and then zip them because all your powder is going to go poof. Trust me, I did that <laughs> one time not thinking. And I did it pressed against my belly. Because, you know, that's how most people seal Ziploc bags. They squeeze all the air out against their belly. Well, I did that, and I get a face full of mica powder. So, um, just gently kind of squeeze the bag. Very gently. And there are some mica powders that do not mix into paint. So, you have to be... Um, you have to sort of experiment before you just sit down and really go for... A, uh, a painting. It does take a little bit of stirring to get it all in there. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm not <laughs> not entirely sure this is going to uh, work out fantastically. Okay, and I'm, I'm thinking I probably should have mixed the mica powder in to the paint and then added the flow trawl because this is not looking like it's going to mix in real well but it does give it this really pretty sheen to it okay um let's try a different color because we'll come back to that one let's go for the fuchsia we'll come back to that one i don't know if it's the air bubbles or what it's causing problems but uh, like I was saying I don't know if I even finished the thought or not so we'll say it again some mica powders do not like mixing into the paint most of them do but there are some that just for some reason do not mix into the paint oh that color is so pretty I hate to waste it in paint but we're gonna do it anyway okay You see how it's sitting on top of the paint where it's gotten wet and it's so pretty and iridescent-y? Just trying to be really careful about mixing this in. I got mica powder everywhere. is not mixing in great either. I'm not sure why. It must be the flow trawl because when I mixed it yesterday, I mixed it just into the paint and it, it actually mixed up really well. Look at all the air bubbles. I don't know why this paint has so many air bubbles. It's just, I'm not entirely sure about using that though. Okay, let me show you what I mixed up yesterday. It was the yellow and the cactus. Completely different. You see how smooth that is? So, lesson learned here. We only mix uh, the mica powder into the paint first. And then, put some Floetrol in there. But, 
Hopefully. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe this will work out. Who knows? And that one is so full of bubbles. It drives me crazy. All right, let's go for, um, let's set these, whoops. <laughs> I'm going to set this off to the side. Okay. Uh, let's go for, we haven't done that one and we haven't done this one. So let's see what it's going to take to mix in the white into the orange. I almost took the cactus colored stick out of the bag. Okay. Whoa! Whoops. That did not go well. I forgot there's a hole right there. Oh, my entire kitchen is going to be very shimmery. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a little better. Let's see what that's going to do. All right. Well, the canvas is very shimmery. That's pretty. Well, it's given the orange a pretty sheen. I'm sure you guys can't see that, but it's super pretty. It's almost a creaminess to it. It's really pretty. And it looks like it's mixing into the orange better than it's mixed into the other colors. But we'll just keep letting it, you know, the colors sit right there for a few minutes. Because that one looks like it actually mixed in pretty well. So we're going to leave that. We've got way too much purple in here. I don't want to use all that purple. So I'm going to save some of that for later. All right, let's try not to make a mess with the blue rose. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I start experimenting. Like, really experimenting, I make a huge mess. You know, you, some of you guys have commented on, you know, how do I how do I paint with wet paintings over to the side and not get paint all over them? How do I not get paint all up and down my arms and elbows? Let me tell you, I used to. I used to get paint up to my elbows, all over my shirt, all over my pants, all over the kitchen floor, the kitchen table. It was all over the sink and the counter everywhere even the dog would every so often show up with paint on her ears <laughs> so you know um you just you learn you know you learn to be more careful when you have wet paintings in the corner oh that's really pretty kind of lumpy i think but i can't tell if that's air bubbles or mica powder so we're gonna let it sit that is a gorgeous color though wow really pretty but again i can't tell if that's lumps from the micro powder or lumps from air bubbles so we'll let that sit a second i'm going to actually take this i'm going to go ahead and use it we're going to go ahead and mix it into that because i don't want to waste this paint maybe it'll help it probably not but we're going to use it while it's here well it actually looked like it helped a little bit so that's good it sure is a pretty color it's a very it's like chartreuse now so yellow plus cactus mica powder gives you a gorgeous chartreuse color All right, so that I think is blended, but it looks a little thick. So I'm going to give it a touch of my chilled distilled water. I hope you guys are, whoops. Stay, stay, stay. Okay. 
So when you're mixing your paint, you want it to come off the stick like honey, like kind of thick honey to me. I'm sure you can't see that, but, um, and it's kind of lumpy, I think, from the mica powder. I think we've got it pretty well blended in now. Boy, it's going to be a long video, I can tell. Okay, so let's see this one, how it's going. I see some of the purple mica powder sitting on the top. Alright, and that orange is just, oh, it just turns so pretty with that, with the white mica powder in there, the pearl. Oh, that's pretty. Now let's take a look at the pink again. See how it's doing. It's pretty. It has this sort of uh, iridescency look to it, so um, I think it'll be good. Now it does feel like it's a little. It kind of looks a little lumpy. I'm going to move these bags of my <laughs> mica powder out of the way real quick, um, so that we don't end up with powder everywhere. Okay, I'm just kind of taking a look and seeing where we're at here as far as time. Okay, if you guys have stuck with me this long, thank you for that. And um, just a little while longer, we're going to move these paint containers out of the way as well. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed and toes. Ooh, that purple just turns so pretty. Let's see if I can get you closer to the camera. This is just the white, so you know you don't need to see that one really. Ouch. Okay, let's see. This is the pink with the... I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably not. Oh, it won't even go into focus. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Well, when the paint dries, we will uh, definitely show you the end result there. Maybe you can see it's purple. This purple is so pretty. I wish you guys could see that. Okay, and then the orange. Let's see, maybe. Oh, about dropped it. That would be not cool. You can kind of see the pearliness to it. Okay. <laughs> so, let's put a little bit of silicone in our paints. I'm sorry. If I say ouch, um, some of you know that I had to climb up on a chair to, you know, fuss with the video um, with my camera. That's actually my phone. Um, so, I have to hop up and down in this chair. And a few weeks ago, I twisted my ankle. I sprained it pretty good. And uh, then, like a week or two ago, I re injured it. And now it really hurts. So, I've kind of been limping around for a couple weeks. I'm like, things happen like in threes. You know, I sprained my ankle real bad. And then we had termites attack our house, which was lovely. And then my truck broke down. And it like really broke down. <laughs> Luckily, I was the only one in the car, only one in the truck, and my kids were already at school. I was trying to go out for the day, went down the driveway, and the ball joint broke in the front passenger side of the truck, in the wheel. And if you guys know what a ball joint is, you know that your car can't live without them. <laughs> so. My truck was going down the hill and the wheel broke off and landed on its side and the truck ended up landing on top of the wheel. So my husband, miracle worker that he is, spent three solid days fixing that truck. And he did an excellent job. It was a miracle. It was all better. And then three days later, one of the coil packs goes out. <laughs> But luckily, because of the age the truck is, you know, we knew the coal packs were probably going to start going out at some point. So we had several on hand. So it was luckily a 15 minute fix. 
<sighs> so we've got to have some good luck on the way. Got to. But guys, keep your fingers crossed. Good luck. Okay, we got silicone, we got mica powder. I've stirred it to death. And we're gonna see what we can get. I'm trying to just layer these colors. Especially because these colors, you know, like the orange and the purple are not gonna work real friendly together, but we're gonna stack them on top of each other anyway. And then let's go with let's go with a hint of green right there. These they don't feel real smooth, so I'm not entirely excited about pouring them. I don't know how if it's gonna dry flat or not. Let's go with a little bit more pink. Try to sort of vary the, uh, I don't know if we're going to have enough paint. We really need a full cup for this little canvas. This is an 8 by 8 canvas. Let's go ahead and pour the rest of that pink in there. set that aside. We're going to do some more orange, a little bit of white, the rest of that green. That really is a very pretty chartreuse color. Now if you guys want to try out, you know, these mica powders with, um, with opaque paints, let me know, you know, how it turns out, but I mixed it with one opaque paint, no, two of them, and I didn't see any, any sheen, any shimmer, nothing. There was like no remnants of the mica powders, it, it, you know, I didn't see any. So, um, if you guys do it and you find, you know, some good luck with it, let me know. I'd love to see your paintings. And you know, when you, um, when you contact me, when you email me, just tell me where you, if you want to share, if you want to share, I'm not telling you, you have to, but you know, I'd love to hear where y'all are from. The girls like to, to know where everybody's from and you know, they get a kick out of it when we get somebody from like Tanzania, you know, or, you know, wherever it just, we like to know where y'all are from. So if you'd like to share. Okay. Just gonna leave that there. <laughs> um, we're gonna let it sit for a second, and I'm sorry that this was a long video, but I had, you know, when you guys ask me a lot of questions, and there's a lot of you asking the same question, I like to, you know, address not only in the comments but you know to everybody as well because everybody can benefit from from your questions. So if you think you have a stupid question, trust me, it is not a stupid question. I have asked some really dumb questions of other artists before. And I usually start off, this is a really stupid question, but you know, how are you gonna how are you gonna know otherwise? Okay, here we go. Wow, that's um interesting and not pretty. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so not pretty. That orange really kind of browned up everything. Let me get my arm out of the light there. Okay. Um, wow, I'm not even sure what to say about that. It, not even the cup is pretty. And if your cup is not pretty... <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't know what to expect, but I really didn't expect it to be this ugly. That is hilarious. Okay. That's all for the cup. Let's just get it to go off these corners a little bit. So, you know, because you know how the paint does not like to go off the corners. 
and then we'll tilt it and like I said um, at the end of the video I'll tack on a, a chunk where um, we have uh, taken it probably outside if the Sun is shining and see if it's at least kind of pretty but this is so ugly right now I really just don't even want to <laughs> Like, I just want to pour it off right now and trash it. Everything mixed so much. I didn't really expect it to mix that much. Oh, I think we're going to need a side catcher for this one. Maybe. Or maybe we should pour it all off. <laughs> but this is kind of my point. You see how the cells are all kind of jaggedy? They're, um, you know, that's what, that's what the metallics kind of do it. It's like having rocks in your paint, you know, but real fine rocks. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I haven't tilted it because I'm just trying to figure out what in the world, you know, where to tilt it. Let's pop all these air bubbles. Well, some of them anyway. Um, as you can see, the cells, you know, we didn't even need any torching with this. And all the cells just came up. So if you want cells that look like this on a really ugly painting. You can try this. <laughs> it has a little charm to it. Okay. Um, 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 uh, I just don't even know where to go with it. So we're going to go off of, uh, we have a lot of paint over here. Then I'm going to kind of take it sideways to start with. I hate to dump all that off though, because I could use some around here. it's just really ugly anyway so and then we're gonna pour it off all right that's a little bit of help right there okay let's uh Let's just get this over with, right? <laughs> this is hilarious. This is so much uglier than I really expected. But I still have hope for it. I still have hope for it. So let's not give up quite yet. I mean, these are very earthy colors. They're kind of pretty. Let's go off this side. I think we're going to have to go off the corners in a second. I don't know. I'm really, I'm going to wait to pass judgment until it's completely dry and we can see what it looks like. Go back. We need to get off that corner over there really bad. I, you know, I hate to say this, but already I'm kind of, kind of digging it. It kind of looks like maybe Mars or something. I don't know. Some distant planet. All right. Let's get the colors off of this side and then we'll work on the corners because we've got a lot of paint still to go. I just don't want to stretch the cells too far in one direction. Okay, now we need to deal with the corners. We're going to fold this so we can keep the corners. Or keep the, keep the sides and not the corners, sorry. Okay, that's enough on that corner. I think, well, we kind of missed it. We need to go off this corner right here. The little tiny corner did not go off. There we go. 
Okay, I can't decide if I like this or not. It's ugly, but kind of not, but kind of ugly, but kind of not. Okay, let's go off of this corner. Okay, this I don't like. This is bothering me. It's too big. That is all the tilting we're going to do. If we could get some other cells to come up there, I think I would be okay with that. This is very interesting. Um, the mica, I think, you know, just sort of keeps the cells from growing because it's just, I don't know if it's the heaviness of it or what. I'm trying to get my torch on, but my fingers are wet. I'm seeing like little flakes of mica powder that didn't really mix in. So definitely, you know, if you're going to try this, mix your mica powder in with your um, paint before you put your flow troll in there. I can't get anything to come up there. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um. I don't even know what to say about this one. So we're just going to bring you down so you can get a close up of it and judge for yourselves. Okay. Now I see that this video is like 37 minutes long. So I really apologize for that. Sorry guys. I hope you've, but you can see all the little cells that came up. Um, not our usual, usual pretty, but I don't know. It's, it has some charm to it. I kind of like the way the, the colors all kind of turned very earthy. Um, I don't think there's any way I can see the sheen. So we're going to wait till it dries and uh, then I'll finish up this video and you can see the sheen on it hopefully, unless it doesn't dry by the time I need to post the video and then I'll show it to you in the next video or one of the videos somewhere in the near future. Sorry guys, I feel like I'm like rambling. I'm yakking an awful lot, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I do a lot of videos all in one chunk. So there might be like a week or two when I'm not painting at all and creating videos. So I haven't seen you guys to talk to you. And it's kind of like when I go visit my parents, I tend to talk an awful lot. And usually they have to say, okay, take a breath, take a breath. Okay guys, there's your pretty for today. I kind of like it. It's very earthy looking. So I mean, it's not the usual bright colors that I usually use, even though they were bright to begin with. So I don't know. I, I'm, I hope it dries flat. That's my one thing now is hopefully it'll dry flat. Um, yeah. So there's your pretty for today. I hope wherever you are on the planet, you're having an awesome afternoon, day, evening, or night. Um, if you guys would watch the ads for me, um, YouTube artists get a little bit of ad revenue from watching if you guys watch the ads all the way through. And right now I'm trying to pay for my house before we lose it. Um, so the ad revenue that I get from you guys watching those ads is going straight into my house fund. And I'm convinced that we can get this house paid for, um, you know, with you guys support of my channel and watching the ads and, um, and your donations to my channel go directly for, for paint and supplies. So don't think that that's going towards, uh, my house. Um, those are, that's going straight towards paint supplies and the mica powders and, you know, the resin and whatever else we use. So, um, those of you who have donated to my channel recently, thank you so very, very much for that. I really appreciate you guys. 
Um, and I appreciate the support from all my viewers and all the emails and the comments. I love you all. See you later. Bye.